Welcome everybody. This is the Nathan channel. I'm your host Nathan. If you are new, welcome. If you are not new, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about something really interesting. For those of you who don't know, my educational background is in aerospace physiology. So I really find the the biological processes of the body to be very interesting. Everything that happens chemically or bio biologically or fascinating to me as well as as are other topics as you've seen on my channel. But today we're going to be talking about sleep specifically. So without further ado, here we go. Sleep is a complex physiological process that involves intricate interactions between the brain, hormones, neurotransmitters, and various body systems. Understanding the physiology of sleep provides a deeper insight into the mechanics underlying this vital aspect of human life. The sleep-wake cycle is regulated by a complex network of structures in the brain. The suprachiasmatic nucleus, as shown in the diagram here, um, a small structure located in the hypothalamus, serves as the master circadian pacemaker. It receives input from light-sensitive cells in the retina, enabling it to synchronize our internal clocks with the 24-hour light-dark cycle. Melatonin, which I'm sure many of you have heard of, is a hormone secreted by the pineal gland, also plays a crucial role in regulating sleep. Melatonin levels increase in the evening, signaling the brain that it is time to prepare for sleep. And as um, melatonin builds up in the body, we call this increase of melatonin um, increasing sleep pressure. This hormone helps you helps facilitate the transition from wakefulness to drowsiness, promoting the onset of sleep. As we progress through the sleep stages, the brain exhibits distinct patterns of electrical activity. Electroencephalography, EEG, provides a window into these changes, revealing the different stages of sleep. During non-REM sleep, the brain shows slow, synchronized delta waves reflecting the deep restorative state of slumber. In contrast, REM sleep is characterized by fast, desynchronized brain waves, similar, similar to those observed during wakefulness. The sleep stages also exhibit distinct features in terms of muscle tone and eye movement. During non-REM sleep, muscle tone decreases and body movements are minimal. In contrast, during REM sleep, the muscles become temporarily paralyzed, likely to prevent us from acting out our dreams. The muscle, and, and there are disorders that have dysfunction in this system, so people will act out their dreams, and that's where we get some uh, different types of sleep disorders. This muscle paralysis, termed atonia, is regulated by a complex interplay between the brainstem and various neurotransmitters. Sleep is not a uniform process, but rather consists of cycles that repeat throughout the night. Each sleep cycle typically lasts around 90 minutes and consists of non-REM and REM sleep in a specific sequence. In the earlier parts of the night, non-REM sleep dominates while REM sleep perform becomes the most prominent as the night progresses. And by the way, for those of you who don't know, REM or non-REM sleep stands for um, non-rapid eye movement or, in the case of REM, rapid eye movement. The functions of sleep extend beyond rest and recovery. Non-REM sleep plays a crucial role in promoti promoting tissue repair, growth, and immune function. It is during this stage that the body releases growth hormone, which supports cellular restoration and renewal. Additionally, Non-REM sleep is essential for memory consolidation, facilitating the transfer of information from short-term to long-term memory stores. So it's kind of interesting. I've read some papers on sleep, and there's different theories on it. I might make a I might make a video on specifically one of the papers I was reading because there are two major theories in the world of um, neuroanalysis or neurobiology of sleep. One of them is like it's kind of a battle deciding what sleep, it, what its main function is. Is it for like memory consolidation organization, like more cognitive functions, or is it more for muscle and body repair? And there's kind of this um, debates in the science world about it. But I'm going to I'll make a video on different uh, topics relating to that because I think it's very interesting and it should be talked about more. REM sleep, also known as paradoxical sleep, is particularly intriguing due to its association with dreaming. Although the exact purpose of dreaming remains speculative, one theory suggests that it may aid in emotional processing and cognitive function. 
During REM sleep, the brain consolidates emotional experiences, promotes creative thinking, and aids in problem solving. I should have added this when I was talking about the papers. Um, in my personal opinion, with everything I know up to this point and my background, I think it's obviously a combination of both. I think both things can happen and do happen. But uh, again, I don't have a full set of knowledge on the two theories, like a solid understanding of everything that it entails. So I will read more and make videos on that. And we can kind of talk about that and discuss it more in detail. Sleep disorders can arise when the intricate balance of physiological processes that regulate sleep is disrupted. Conditions such as insomnia, sleep apnea, narcolepsy, and restless leg syndrome can profoundly impact sleep patterns and lead to various health issues in a person's life. Treatment for sleep disorders involves a multidisciplinary approach that combines behavioral interventions, medications, and in some cases, therapeutic devices. In conclusion, understanding the physiology of sleep provides valuable insights into the mechanisms that govern this essential aspect of human existence. The interplay between brain structures, hormones, neurotransmitters, and body systems orchestrate the intricate dance of sleep. Further research in this field holds the promise of uncovering new discoveries and therapeutic interventions to optimize sleep, ultimately enhancing our overall well-being. If you found this video to be interesting, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Feel free to comment any ideas that you want for future videos or any topics that you find really interesting or any topics I should revisit from existing videos. I would gladly take a look at that and make more videos. Um, I really enjoy making videos for this channel and it's a lot of fun. So without further ado, I will see you guys in the next video.